Welcome to A Course in Business Miracles. This is Heather Dominic, creator of businessmiracles.com and founder and leader of the highly sensitive entrepreneur movement. Join me today for some genuine practical assistance and a business altering and life changing experience. A business miracle. This is A Course in Business Miracles, episode number 38 what it means to be a highly sensitive entrepreneur, or HSE, part one of two. In the next two episodes, I will address the emotional side of being a highly sensitive entrepreneur and how a core practice, such as setting intentions, will support you. My invitation for you is to take out your journal, And when setting intentions, I actually like to set both an inner intention and an outer intention. So my invitation for you is to first set your inner intention. And what that means is, how would you like to feel? Really focus on the feelings. How would you like to feel? then once you've gotten clear about your inner intention, which is how you want to feel, is your outer intention. And those are the tangibles, the practicals that you want to walk away with. So what is your outer intention? And take just a moment to write that down now. just start to wrap up if you're still writing. So the thing about intentions is that it literally creates a focus of thought. And when you have the power of intent, then that prepares and allows the universe to literally line up to support you. The thing to remember is that we want to set an intention to be clear about the focus and to be open to the way that it's going to be brought about. So often what gets in the way is we step in and we're like, this is my intention, this is my plan, and what we secretly also mean is, and this is how I expect it to happen, and this is when I expect it to happen by and then the minute that it doesn't happen in that way by that time frame, we're like, see, it doesn't work. See, it doesn't matter. Yep, you know, just another reason. The universe is not there for me. So my invitation is that you stay open for all the ways that your intention is going to be brought into form. So literally, like your outer intention, you might receive an inspired idea in a dream during the night that is going to be the key to the actualization of that outer intention. Don't ignore that. Pay attention. So don't just look to me or to look to others or to the content necessarily to deliver both inner and outer intention. Make sense? Okay, good. We're going to talk a lot about what it is to be highly sensitive. And part of that is to be emotional. And that is a good thing. And it took me a long time to really be okay with particularly crying and the release that comes from that. So my invitation is for you to know that this is a safe and sacred space exactly for that to happen. Truly better to just let it go because you realize if you're not, you're carrying it around and it's going to transform into other energy in some way. It's going to transform into anger. It's going to transform into shame. It's going to transform into guilt and all energies that make it very, very difficult for us to operate in our businesses successfully. So please, please. And when you see someone else who is crying, perhaps, or releasing, don't try to stop them. 
Don't say, oh, don't worry about it. It's okay. Oh, don't, don't cry. Most often when someone does that, when they're trying to shut down someone else's emotion, it's because they're so afraid that they're actually going to then feel that themselves. So the best thing that you could do is just hand a tissue box, you know, just that's it. And then that's all. And just let it be. Okay? Good? Awesome. Deep breath in and let it out. So as I was talking about with intent, it says that a healed mind does not plan. So first of all, there's part of you probably as an HSE who really likes to be in control. And we'll be talking more about that. So the idea of not having a plan can just be like, ah, right? Quote goes on to say, it carries out the plans which it receives through listening to wisdom with a capital W that is not its own. And as a highly sensitive entrepreneur, you are coded to have direct access to that wisdom. So highly sensitive entrepreneur. So first of all, just to share with you a little bit from Dr. Elaine Aaron about the highly sensitive person. So she states, for aggressive societies to survive, however, They always need, need that priest, judge, advisor class as well. This class balances the kings and warriors, just as the U.S. Supreme Court balances the president and his armed forces. It is a more thoughtful group, often acting to check the impulses of the warrior kings. Since the advisor class often proves right, its members are respected as counselors, historians, teachers, scholars, and the upholders of justice. They have the foresight, for example, to look out for the well-being of those common folks on whom the society depends, those who grow the food and raise the children. They warn against, against hasty acts of aggression and bad use of the land. And highly sensitive persons tend to fill that advisor role. We are the writers, historians, philosophers, judges, artists, researchers, theologians, therapists, coaches, teachers, parents, and plain conscientious citizens. What we bring to any of these roles is a tendency to think about all the possible effects of an idea. Often we have to make ourselves unpopular by stopping the majority from rushing ahead. Thus, and I really want you to hear this, thus, to perform our role well, we have to feel very good about ourselves. And I would recommend you write that down. And I'm going to say it again. Thus, to perform our role well, we have to feel very good about ourselves. We have to ignore, ignore all the messages from the warriors that we aren't as good as they are. And you might want to write that down too. We have to ignore all the messages from all the warriors that we aren't as good as they are. The warriors have their bold style, which has its value. But we too have our style and our important contribution to make. 
So all the messages from the warriors and all the forms that it can take, and it will show up in the form of your family of origin, commercials, movies, advertisements, friends, former employers, you name it. So let's just clarify and get right to the point of are we really highly sensitive? And maybe you're a person, somebody else brought you here and you're like, what is this thing that she is talking about? What is this weird place I'm in? And how can I leave as soon as possible? (laughs) Well, again, as Elaine Aaron said, so you are part of that royal advisor class. And the way that Dr. Elaine Aaron teaches it is that you're literally physically coded this way. Biologically. This wasn't something that happened to you as a result of the environment that you grew up in. It's not something that you learned. You literally, according to Dr. Elaine Aaron, 20% of the population is brought into the world as highly sensitive to fill that role of the advisor class. And with the work that I've been doing with her, although this is not research that's complete, but the latest statistics that that she shared with me is that in 2014, her sense is that that only about 5% of that 20% are willing to take the path of being self-employed even though she says that actually self-employment is a great fit for a highly sensitive. But the issue is, and this is what I'm going to be talking about, is that it's the HSE shadow side that can keep you from being successful. But the minute you are in your HSE strengths, that will support you in being very successful as a person who's self-employed. So... Probably one of the reasons that you've been drawn to the business that you're drawn to is because it's something that comes very naturally to you. I'm sure that most of you in this room, you are the person that people gravitate towards to talk to and to share their issues with. It's what I've come to call the stranger incident. So... You're standing at a party or waiting for the bus or maybe even somewhere like the grocery store and suddenly a stranger that you don't really know or maybe barely know comes up to you and starts telling you their deepest, darkest secrets. Has anybody ever had that happen? Just take a minute and look around the room. That doesn't happen to everyone, trust me. And I can remember, like, being in my 20s and this would happen, I'd be like, why me? Like, what is it? Like, is it come some kind of, like, smell that, like, I'm, like, you know, like, exuding? And, like, I mean, I can literally remember this one party and I was just, like, hanging out and this guy comes over to me. I didn't, never even told me his name, but I learned that he had experienced sexual abuse when he was seven. I mean, this is, this is. That is evidence, right? Or sometimes if you haven't had a stranger incident, although it seems like most of us in the room have, that you're the friend that most people go to for advice and counsel. Sometimes to the point where you're like, okay, wait a minute. Like, is this, where's the give and take here? Right? Like, where's my turn? And that is why it is so important to take this skill that you have and to channel it into a business so that you can receive a return for your gifts and talents. If that's something that you desire, if you're fine being the friend and the, that everyone goes to or, this, or the person that all the strangers come up to and you're very happy with that, then that's fine. If you have found in the past or perhaps still that you find yourself depleted or again feeling like there isn't a give and take, then that is where the channel of a business is so valuable and so important. 
so that again, that you can receive a full return. I like to call it ROE and ROI, a return on your energy and a return on your investment. So if you're going to invest your energy and resources to start a business and to be in business, then you need to be receiving that in full return in the form of payment, by the way, just in case you haven't picked up on that's what I'm talking about. Okay. So in order to be able to step into really channeling it effectively within a business, it's also important for us to get clear about where those lines or those boundaries have been blurred in the past, or maybe where even our skills have worked against us in the past. So my invitation for you is to begin to think about a time when being highly sensitive worked against you. You found yourself being stopped. You found yourself being shunned. You found yourself being shamed. Thank you for listening. And I hope you enjoyed this episode of A Course in Business Miracles. If you're ready to learn how to use your highly sensitive abilities to support you in being purposeful, profitable, and empowered rather than scattered, poor, and undervalued, Take my free self quiz to find out if you are indeed a highly sensitive entrepreneur. And if you are, along with your quiz results, you'll receive my free HSE success guide, which will teach you how to have your highly sensitive abilities working for you to create the results you desire in your business. Take the quiz and receive your free success guide now at www.hsequiz.com.